What's good? I'd like to welcome everybody to another edition of the Producer Corner. It's your boy D. Dot, along with Corey and Trey. What's good, fellas? What's going on? What's up? What's up? <laughs> oh, man, you know, just uh, been getting back into some deep making. I was a little bit under the weather uh, this past weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, just came back into the gym as well. Didn't work out in a few days. Um, and, but it, it was a good weekend, though. The Raiders won, you know. Uh, Tony Romo got hurt. Sorry, Chosen. No, I don't wish nobody to get hurt, man. I mean, I just wish he, Chosen know I'm a hater of the Kyle Park, man. But, you know, I get at him all the time. Uh, other than that, man, I've been uh, submitting a lot of tracks for uh, publishing opportunities. I really just stacking that beat catalog and just uh, – a lot of literature, going back to some uh, couple of books I've been reading over the years, and just uh, kind of refreshing on a couple of things. Uh, what's good with you guys, man? I'm going to start off with you, Corey. Yo, man, football season is really, it's been rough this year, man. I've been seeing videos of people fighting, going at each other's necks, man. We got to remember that uh, this is just a game. Like, we do this, this football thing is supposed to be fun. You're not supposed to be getting your, your head uh, whooped off in a parking lot, you know what I'm saying, because right. the team lost. So, man, people got to be safe out there. It's getting crazy. But, uh, man, I've been I've been still at this album, man, this this album with uh, the homie Ryan Brownson. I'm really excited about it. I'm really happy with the way, uh, not to toot my own horn, but the way the mixing is coming out. It's really coming together like a project. And those of you who engineer know what I mean, like, um, there's times where an album just sounds like a bunch of singles, and then there are times when the consistency <laughs> in which you are mixing and moving the tracks uh, remains the same across the board. And I'm really starting to get that album feel from it. I'm super excited. You know, um, I can't wait to master it just to see how I did, but it's it's really coming together nice. Other than that, uh, my diet coach, uh, shout out to Josh of uh, Revolutionary Athletics. He uh, he changed my diet up, so he's got me doing some some wild stuff right now. I consider it to be wild. My man wants me to get 175 grams of protein in a day. Um, those of you who diet uh, know that that's, that's pretty crazy. Um, it's hard to get. It's not crazy, but it's really hard to get. So other than, you know, focusing on my health, trying to stay healthy, happy, you know, just mixing away, man, chipping at the album. Word, word, man. What you got on deck as far as the topic of the evening? Um, man, I'm going to need y'all help on this one. Uh, I got a situation I'm going through that I want to share. I think we've maybe talked about this. Uh, maybe we've talked about it before in brief passing. But uh, I want to bring up this situation because I think it's a really good situation just about um, someone trying to send me files. And I want to share this situation and I want to share what it means to send proper files. Yeah, man, I would definitely love to get into that because Lord knows we've all had our fair share of situations with already sending and sending files back and forth, man. Some don't get it. Some don't get it. What's good with you, Trey? Oh, man, just um, just been a good weekend. Uh, you know, just like we're talking about sports, my team won a game last night, so having a good time. Uh, the Saints lost, so that's always good to me. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> they lost. Hey, hey, so hey, we we had a good weekend. Um, like we were working on music, man. Um, actually, one of the artists who. I work with is going to be calling in in a little while. Um, we're going to interview him and talk to him about some, some stuff he has going on. Um, but other than that, just working with a couple other artists, getting some material together for some projects going on. Um, starting to just get a lot of people in my area starting to come my way, I guess because I've been out here for a little while now and people are starting to uh, like what they're hearing. Um, as far as my topic, man, um, we gonna, I'm going to piggyback with, with, with my boy Corey tonight. Matter of fact, he already probably knows what I'm talking about because I called him last week to inquire to get some information. So we're going to piggyback kind of like on the same thing, but I'm not going to give any um, thing about uh about equipment tonight. We're gonna, I guess we're going to make this a 
a, a, a forum tonight where we're going to talk about some stuff about what actually goes on. And I'm going to talk about tonight just what we look at when we look at mixing and mastering people's projects, how we go about charging and things of that nature. Um, so I think a lot of people don't realize what what we go through and why sometimes we charge what we charge especially when it's when it's things that we haven't even seen yet or heard yet, and they just want us to give them prices on things. So we're we going to talk about that tonight. So that's what I got. But other than that, man, it's just been great working on music and enjoying football, man. Love it. Man, man definitely, man. I can't wait to get into those topics as well. Um, I'm going to really, I guess my topic is going to be more of a discussion. Um, and I saw Corey, you posted about this earlier. But right now, um, there's a real outrage, and you got some people that are are in agreement with maybe what Slim Jesus has been doing. It's been a lot of controversy in regards to him lately. Um, some people aren't in agreement, so we're gonna kind of just go around, and I just want to get you guys' opinions on that before the end of the show. Um, we're about to go to our first commercial break of the night. We'll be back with the producer's car. <laughs> What's good? We're back with the producer's corner, and we're joined by a very special guest of the night, Marcel P. Black. What's good, my brother? Man, you tell me, bro. Everything is love. We're going to plan it out, man. Oh, man. You know, first and foremost, man, definitely a pleasure having you on the show. Um, you know, I'm a, I've heard a lot about you as well from uh, Trey, man, and I went over uh, to your website, Checked out a couple of videos, man. I like what you're doing, man. Keep it up, man. Real tough. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Thank you very much, man. No problem at all, man. I'm going I'm to let Trey kick things off, man, uh, on the interview. So, Trey, without much further ado. All right. All right. What's up, Black? Cool, bro. You know what I'm saying? You know, do a, do a little daddy do this for the evening, man. Trying to get the crib straight. But uh, other than that, man, everything is Gucci, bro. All right, man. Before I get into my stuff, like I say, I... I've been. I always talk about you on the show. I always give you shout out to your projects, man. Um, just give a little, give the people a little, little, you know, a little taste of what you're about. Tell them what you, what you do, what you're trying to do. Just let them know how you started in this game, man. Oh Lord. All right. So, uh, you know, Marshall people had originally from, uh, you know, what I'm saying Oklahoma. I came to Baton Rouge in 2002 to go to Southern. I've been here ever since. You know, what I'm saying. Uh, you know, uh, grew up in the musical household. My father's God's musician. So like you know, I I got I was blessed with to get the music from him. Um, I also kind of learned like the independent side of the music business from him as well. You know what I'm saying? Um, when I was like 19 or 20, I wanted to sign my first deal with a label that was based out of uh, well, between between Baton Rouge and Atlanta, whatever called the Redland. I was in that, so I was like maybe like 23, got out of it, and managed to doing solo stuff ever since. Man, I um, consider myself a non-traditional conscious artist. You know what I'm saying? Um, it, it, it's definitely conscious, you know, in terms of content and uh, objective, but um, I don't necessarily, uh, you know, limit myself to the to the, to the uh, sonic. You know, I guess I, I don't limit to myself to the to the same approach that a lot of the other conscious artists use. It is totally with respect to the other conscious artists because I've definitely come from that. I have music like that, but really, man, my whole focus is a non-traditional conscious artist. It's like I kind of push it forward, so we got stuck in the nineties. Oh, I have, you know, what I'm saying touring um, artists, man. I do. I mean. I travel all over, you know, I've really been focused on the last two years on building my name in the South, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm, you know, pretty much every year I tour from, you know, Texas all the way to Florida, you know what I'm saying? I, I might get up to, like, Missouri or Tennessee or what have you, um, but pretty much all the, all the states in the, in the Deep South uh, really been grinding, man. I've been blessed to open up, you know what I'm saying? Um, Run the Jewels, Mob Deep, Slum Village, Karis, One J, Electronica, Common, just to name a few, you know what I'm saying? Had a couple pro- projects on the CMJs. Uh, that's the uh, College Music Journal, uh, Top 40 Hip Hop Charts. And, you know, uh, facilitator is where I do a lot of, uh, I, I mentor a lot of other artists. I, you know, try to do events that give other artists a platform, you know what I'm saying, as it pertains to the Devil Chip Hop scene. And just working, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm a teacher, you know, I'm a father, I'm a husband, just an everyday dude, man, just trying to use this music to make something, you know what I'm saying? Word, word. And and like I say, I, I try to tell people. I remember the first time I met I met him. Um, he came to my house. He was recording on another guy's uh, project. Right, so right. It was my first time meeting him, and the brother got on my mic, and I thought he was gonna break it. And he was like, <laughs> he, he was like, 
Trey, that's just how I rap. That's how I rap. And so I really, you know, a lot of times when you're when you're recording somebody, um, you're just in the recording engineer's mode, and you're paying paying attention to technicalities and things of that nature. Well, after he after the project was done and everybody went home, you know, you sit there and you listen to what was recorded, and I started just hearing the context of what was going on. And um, the brother really had a lot of good stuff to say, so we started working. Um, a lot after that, and it's been a good relationship. And I wanted you to explain because you're the first cat that I've ever met that actually goes out and makes his money doing what people want to do. And you do it saying conscious things. How do you do that? There's a lot of young cats right now that want to do it, but they don't know how to go about doing it, Marcel. And you, you do it, brother. How do? What? what how do you do that? Um, I mean, honestly, bro, I, I got to give it up to my dad first. And my dad's a gospel musician. Um, he's 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 toured from, you know, several, you know, pretty much throughout the Midwestern states and the South, all the way to California. He has a brother out there in California. I remember going with him. You know, what I'm saying like pretty much every other weekend, he's he's booked on somebody's program in Kansas or in Missouri or Texas, somewhere like that. And like uh, you know, this is back in the days of cassette tapes. You know what I'm saying? So he would have, so so we would go, and he would sing or whatever. He would have his cassette tapes. You know what I'm saying? If you know, uh, sometimes he might sell. He would tell me if you sell. He was like, if you sell my my tapes for seven dollars a pop, you know what I'm saying? I will let you keep four dollars. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or if we sold it for ten, I let you keep I let you keep seven. You know what I'm saying? And so for one, he was teaching me kind of like just to hustle, you know what I'm saying, like, all right, so we we, we saying we got a merch table set up, we got everything, people coming by, you know what I'm saying, and if they want to buy something, you know, it motivated me to be like, all right, to kind of come about my come about my shell and not wait for people to come to me, but actually go out and introduce people to my dad's music or whatever. I remember, like, you know, in, 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 our, in our hometown, he would have, like, his tapes in, like, a, like you know, like, some of the different stores in the mall and things of the nature, other, like, little Christian stores or whatever. And, like, he, you know, he would sell the tapes on consignment or whatever. And, like, I was in charge of, you know what I'm saying, making sure going in there, making sure that the, the tapes were set up on the displays. Or, you know, and later when he got CDs as well, and making sure the money was exchanged. And so that's something he taught me when I was, like, maybe, maybe like, 11, 12 years old or whatever, you know, real, real young. And it's kind of transfer, you know, and so using that same type of hustle, understanding that, like, you know, if you have a product that people find value in, you just have to go to the people because regardless of how talented you are, you know what I'm saying, the likelihood of them coming to you, like if you have, like for instance, like you have Drake and Future dropping mixtapes for free, or you have a Rick Ross dropping mixtapes for free, what makes them want to go listen to myself, you know what I'm saying, charging people for money, you know what I'm saying? And so, mm -hmm. all that, so, so like, so, what I, so basically what I did, bro, man, just, just, just like, I remember I was that guy, you know what I'm saying, back in the late, you know what I'm saying, 2000s, like going to all the parties and bad rules, going to the club DJs and going to, you know, the promoters and thinking like, okay, if I give my CD to them, then they'll play it or my, my association with them, that'll have me on too. But, man, they don't give a damn. All they care about is the money that they're making for that night. You know what I'm saying? And so right. like, what, what it took for me was like just being true to myself, who I am as a man, who I am as an artist, and making people that everyday people who I have real conversations with or I really deal with in my, in, in my line of work, being a youth development worker, or, you know, you know, having real conversations and creating content that they can relate to, and, and once I do that, making myself available to them, you know, not just online, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, look, sometimes when my latest album dropped for the first two months, I would go to other rapper shows and set up my merch table, you know what I'm saying? Because people knew who I was, but if I'm not performing, how do I get my CD, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to other people's shows, you know, uh, man, just be blessed to be, you know, with the gift of being a good performer. Um, and, you know, that, 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 that's, that's, that's been pretty much my biggest word of mouth, man, just being a good performer, taking it very, very serious. I ain't up rapping over vocals. I ain't up rapping over other people's beats. I have my original material, you know what I'm saying? So I'm up and performing. I'm getting paid for the performance, you know what I'm saying, uh, in whatever city I go to. And now you like what you heard and you see value and what I'm doing, what I'm what I, what I, what I providing, and so now you don't come to the merch table and buy an album. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's one of the situations to where I do it so often. Thank you, baby. Good job. It's one, of the, good job. it's one of the situations where I do it so often. It seems easy to me, but it's not actually, it's hard to explain. I don't know. It's just, it's, 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 it's taking the initiative to actually go 
find the people and find your particular demographic. Like a lot of people do promotion, but promotion only comes after marketing. So marketing is actually finding your your true demographic. Like, okay, I'm 32 years old. I'm a husband. I'm a father. When I was younger, I was kind of in the streets, but I got knowledge of self. Okay, you know, going to Southern, I met gobs and gobs of people like that, just like myself. And so, mm-hmm. okay, all right, so I know this is what they want to hear. Okay, what kind of business would I like to go to? What websites? Like, for me, I know Facebook is my main thing to reach out to my fans. My, t- my Instagram bank is getting up. I'm getting more active on, on Twitter. But people in my age demographic are on Facebook heavy. That's, that, that's what we vent. That's what we joke. That's what we post videos. And so that's where my content lies or whatever. And then I try to direct it to my site. Um, you know, but um, just reaching out to the people and just, you know, just in, in a real, true, honest, and organic way. Um, when, I went, when I was in my early 20s or whatever, I was signed to a record label, and so that kind of gave me the other side. And, you know, the record label had a pretty, we had, you know, pretty much like like an endless, a endless budget because one of the guys in the group, their mother was pretty much, their, their parents pretty much putting the money, and they doctors and they doctors and, and, and they own property. So they had, like, millions on deck to work with. So when I was young, I remember, like, like 21 having a lawyer on a $3,000 a month retainer, an entertainment lawyer. So I saw contracts when I was young. Um just, um, I'm a nerd, bro. I got all these books about hip hop on every mm-hmm. source magazine since 2000. You know what I'm saying? I'm reading all this stuff because, um, you know, like a lot of times in print, in print magazines, rappers, that's what rappers ain't lying to you. They really talk about their real struggle. Every other time when the camera's on, they lying to you, but in his print magazines. So I can tell you how Rick Ross first started because I had this print magazine when he first started doing interviews, when he was still kind of humble or ASAP Rocky or something like that. I do that. It's websites I go to, um, you know, uh, uh, raprehab.com, um, uh, music, music industry news. Um, I, I actually, I went to a panel yesterday, uh, music industry panel yesterday here in Baton Rouge. So I'm a lifelong learner just trying to figure out you know, um, how to how to apply these different things that happen in the industry to my independent do it to self model, you know what I'm saying? And uh, you know what I'm saying, Lord willing, I've been blessed, man. Word, word. Well, like I say, we talk about this kind of stuff all the time. I'm gonna let Corey and D get in right quick and let them ask you pick your brain right quick. For sure, for sure. Yo, what's going on man? It's Corey. I'm actually since you were just getting into it a little bit, um I'm really curious about the whole label thing. You know how this how today like people are really shying away from labels and more so going for distribution deals. Um, do you feel, how do you feel about labels? Was, was your label experience good? Can you kind of share a little bit more about that? Oh, with us? It wasn't, it wasn't good. Um, so, so, so like this, this is what happened. I don't really care. I, I'll be very frank with y'all. I can trade a home and whatever. So basically, man, it was a guy who I started doing music with when I was in high school. He was a class ahead of me. You know what I'm saying? And so we was doing music. He graduated. He went to Morehouse. All right, so he goes to Morehouse. He finds a guy out there who raps as well. It just so happened that this guy is from Baton Rouge, just like just about the luck of the draw, right? And so, you know, I came to Southern. I'm in the same hometown as the guy who my friend met in college as, as this guy's parents, and they got all the money, right? So I'm in Baton Rouge with the guy's parents who funded the money. My best friend and, his, and it, the guy he met are in Atlanta, right? And so... You know, I would, at one point I pretty much moved to Atlanta. You know, what I'm saying, or, you know, I was going pretty much going back and forth, pretty much every other, you know, every other week, you know, recording, working on stuff or whatever. Um, and long story short, man, like it was all good. You know, I'm 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 very to tell you this, man. I'm very outspoken. I'm very to the point. I'm a country. I'm a country dude. I I, I ain't really with all the extra pleasantries. Like you know, I'm I'm very direct or whatever. And so we got to the point where. Um, yeah, so so we got to the point where we all in college and we talk about doing music full time, and I didn't necessarily feel comfortable with that because the other two guys in the group was pretty well to do, you know what I'm saying, financially. And so for me, I got to be in school. I got to get a degree, you know what I'm saying? And so I started asking about contracts, you know, just, you know, just like, look, all right, cool. Well, if you want me to drop out of school, I need to see something that's going to be very permanent, something that I know I'm straight regardless of – you know, because, you know, me dropping out of school, I ain't got millionaire parents to fall back on. You know what I'm saying? Like like, like you other guys do whatever. So I started asking about contracts. They took that as a sign of disrespect. Long story short, they, they went sign. They, they, so the other two guys in the group, they, they, they came up with a whole other deal with a whole other person I never heard about. And then when I started asking about the contracts, the guy who I, who I grew up with, like, 
he kind of, I don't know, he just stopped talking to me, shut down, because he's in a situation, am I going to be loyal to my friend, or am I going to let him fuck up, my, I'm sorry, I don't know if I curse or not, am I going to let him mess up okay. my money? All right, I'm going to let him mess up my money. He chose the money, you know what I'm saying? He chose the money over, over you know, over, you know, basically left me out there in that water. So, the label situation, like, of course, we were just, I mean, I mean, to this day, this group, they put out an album on, um, well, it's, it's, uh, uh, it used to be Koch Records. I can't remember the name of it now. But uh, Koch, whatever the, the record level Koch Records is now, it has songs on NBA 2K. They're doing very, very well. It ain't number love or whatever. But, like, so they 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 going on to do well or whatever. But for me, the way it was presented to me, it just ain't feel right with my spirit. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I can't, like, I'm not, I, I'm, I, it was a situation to where could I sleep at night every night, you know what I'm saying, knowing that I'm being screwed over, or, you know what I'm saying, can I sleep with some peace and just, and just do it by myself? And I chose to do it by myself. It was honestly the best decision I ever made, and I don't regret it one bit. Now, I, I do miss some of the friendships I had, whatever, but, hey, you know, when you grow when you, you know, when you matriculate in the manhood, those type of things happen or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So, um, so my labor situation, and I, I say all that to say, like those guys, and when I was there, like they had is probably a bigger budget financially, pretty much an endless budget, bigger than most record labels in bad rooms, like more than a dead game or anybody else, because like I said, the dad was like the, the top-rated heart surgeon in the state. So you talk about millionaires who really didn't want no money back, but they have all the resources in the world to put into this particular company. So like 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 I saw like big money. I remember like they bought my publisher back when I was like twenty three years old. Like barely know what publishing was. Like, they wrote me like a check of five thousand dollars when I was twenty three years old. Now I remember like you know getting a per diem. You know what I'm saying? Getting paid every week because it was a part of the advance of my record label. You know what I'm saying? To being flown to different places like that or whatever. Um, at one point we almost had a um, production deal with Equipment Out Records, but this is around the time when Andre 2000 decided he wanted to be part of the record label situation, and then Big Boy, Big Boy started uh, Purple Ribbon, which is now defunct or whatever. And so the people that we was talking, the same A and R's we had with them, um, they kind of fell off when they went to Purple Ribbon or whatever. So I saw all this man between between the age of 21 and 23. You know what I'm saying? So um, you know, I learned a lot from the situation. Uh, speaking to now. Um, I've released eight projects, self-released, all by myself. Um, I've, I've, I've been offered a couple of record deals with, with, with labels that I probably would deal with if the situation was right. The situation hasn't been right. Um, I actually model myself after kind of like the independent uh, do-it-yourself labels like a Rhyme Sayers or like a Stone's Throw or like a Mass Appeal or, you know, formerly Death Junks or Strange Music or something like that. Um, that, that that's kind of the way I move. Like I was, when Run when Runner Jewels came to Bad Rules two years ago, um, I was blessed to like meet Killer Mike and he's been a mentor ever since. And so he's given me a lot of games as far as like how to host yourself independently. So I'm all for the independent self release stuff. There's a whole lot of stuff that you can do to monetize your craft. If you have your paperwork together, you have your hustle together, you have quality content. Would I would I sign a record deal with like an independent label that's gonna help me get into uh, places or spaces that I can't, you know what I'm saying, like a Mellow music group? Hell yeah. If 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 the situation is right for me. You know what I'm saying? Um I've been offered distribution situations, uh, with selector hits or whatever, um it is, you know, for, for whatever reason, it didn't necessarily work out at the time. Um, but it's, it's definitely something that I would look into um, move, moving on, man, because I, you know, I've done a lot. You know, bad, it ain't the music industry in Baton Rouge. And, like, you know, I've, I've, I've pretty much, uh, I guess I've done everything I can do as an independent artist of Baton Rouge, but a lot of the things that I need to do to further my career aren't here or whatever. So basically I'm in the process of right now of, like, kind of reaching out to, like, all the other artists like myself or who are, like, like myself and doing way, way, way bigger from, from a Killer Mike to a Fish Scales and Mappy Roots to a, a Mally who runs with the Rhyme Sales Corp in, uh, in Minneapolis. You know, kind of dealing with them, man, and just kind of picking their brains exactly on what I could do to kind of enhance my situation. Like, every manager I've ever hit quit, ever had quit on me because they couldn't keep up with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I do everything myself. I book my own tours. I, you know, I manage myself. I do all my own publishing, all my own paperwork. You know, um, I try to do, I try, like, I was listening to, um, Stick man from Dead Prez, he was like, he was like, I fired all my lawyers so I can keep that money, you know, that, that, you know, for myself. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, mm -hmm. I ain't necessarily fired nobody, but I do believe in, I don't mind putting in the extra work. 
You know what I'm saying? So I can monitor, you know, to get the maximum amount of profit in anything that I do. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and, and so independently, that's all it takes. Uh, but, but I do understand. I'm, I'm at the point now where it's like, all right. So if I want to, if, if I want to make even more money, so I, you know what I'm saying? So I can leave my job as a teacher and be finally, you know, you know, it's, it's a couple of different things that I'm going to have to move. I'm, I'm going to have to do to move to the next level or whatever. So to answer to it, it, the, the long, to, the long answer to your question, yes, I would be interested if, uh, if, if, if an independent label came, came along, um, you know, cause like, I understand contracts, like the average record, like major label record deal, you know, before a 360 deal is, it's set up for the record label to make um, 82% profit and the artist to make 18% profit after they've recouped everything out of your 18%. I'm not doing that. Like, I was blessed to meet. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just not doing that. And then 360, like, bro, I can tell you right now, I made the majority of my money off of, um, off of CD sales and show and live shows, like you know what I'm saying. I'm not giving nobody a cut of that. So it's just not happening and, unless you like you give me one of them Jay Z deals, and I'm not Jay Z. But like, oh, you give me one of them Madonna deals, that's a 360. But I, you know, I, I don't, you know, my, my name isn't being up to warrant that. So it's not happening. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've been offered some pretty good looks at the time. This wasn't right or what have you. But uh, nah, I'm not like um, I was when I, when I did A3C two years ago. I was blessed to meet. Um, Dante Ross. I mean, I mean, I, I, I showed trade a card and everything. And, uh, of course, Dante Ross is not going to, you know, he signed, like, brand new being in, 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 uh, new, in, uh, 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 leaders of the new school and a child called Quest back in the 90s. He actually told me, bro, if this was 95, you'd have a deal. But he was like, for what you do and for his position at Warner Brothers, it wouldn't work or whatever. He, he should have told me that or whatever. And he was like, honestly, with what you do in your movement, you really don't need all that. You don't need somebody to come taking your money, you know, and changing your brand or whatever. You need to do what you need to do. To, you know, um, I haven't spoken to him in a while, but he's given me some very uh, valuable points how to move as an artist in the industry, though. So, um, you know, I, I think a, a lot of the reasons why artists kind of get messed over or what have you. For one, Baton Rouge does not have a music industry, so therefore... People have clearly no idea. People just think they can drop a song on Twitter and get signed by Gucci Man. It don't work like that. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't have a. It doesn't have a. And so when somebody does come along with some paperwork, like they can sign up for nothing. They can sign up for pennies. They can sign up for toenail clippers. You know what I'm saying? Because they have no idea how the industry works and they have no idea what to look for. You just hear the word signed because a record deal at its at its by definition is. I will allow you to come record in my studio. But if you got your own studio, okay, all right. So that means the next thing is we will promote your stuff. Okay, how are you going to promote it? Okay, where are you going to promote it? And You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's just an uh, industrial education that a lot of artists don't have, and I'm trying to impart on other people or whatever. It quite frankly, it's because it's not here in the city of Baton Rouge. <laughs> Got you, got you. I'm, yeah, I, man. I'm, 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 I'm a son of a, of a, of a, of a evangelist, so I can be very, very long winded sometimes. If I'm just talking too long, just cut me out, bro. I'm, I grew up in the church, so <laughs> <laughs> if you ask me the question, I'm gonna answer. But I'm, I'm gonna give you the long answer so we don't get confused. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm just going on too much of a rant, just cut me out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Roger that, man. Well, it's good. I'm, I'm glad that you uh, were able to explain that. I think that inside look, we've never really had that. We've had the outside scopes and the hearsay, but hearing it firsthand was definitely nice. Um, I'm going to go ahead and kick it to D-Dot, man. Yeah, man. So, um, you know, this kind of, again, brought back because I'd like to talk about things uh, like marketing, presentation online, things of that nature. And I really see that, you know, you have a very good online presence, your website, easy to navigate, you got everything up there, music, tours, videos, uh, press kits, that's something that's real important. Um, I see a lot of artists in this day and age that, you know, even a lot of artists that want to come on this show, they hit us up and they don't have any of this stuff in place. How important is is having, you know, things like website, press kit, one central location for everybody to find your information. How has that been beneficial to you? And what's your thoughts on, you know, artists that really don't have that part of their, uh, of their themselves together? Man, bro, honestly, bro, it's extremely important, man. Like, I, don't, I mean, like I said, it's, I, I can't even speak on why they do it because it, it just makes no sense. Like, the music industry is a billion dollar business. Even, even like, even like a person like Tech Nine, 
who is 100% independent record, like, you know, strange music, you know, they're on the Forbes list making more money than Rick Ross. You know what I'm saying? So the music, so at, at, at any given, um, you know, uh, 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 juncture in the music industry, if you're independent or major, it's, it's either a million dollar or a billion dollar business. So I have zero, I have zero, uh, I don't understand how people think they can just drop a song on SoundCloud and tweet it. And you'll get signed to, you know, and, and how are you going to do business with an organization that has lawyers, that has accountants, that has business, fi- you know, like, I don't know. Um, as a, as a um, you know, I, I facilitate shows as well. I miss a lot of artists, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I think I think the biggest problem with a lot of artists is they care more about local fame, and they think local fame will get them to the, you know, get them get them the, the national recognition. Like, I don't know. I don't, like... Um, they they care about more being seen more at the popping party or in their neighborhood than actually making money from from what they do or what have you. Um, it's, in terms of presentation, like you know, like I you know I I have, I have an organization called the Bedroom Hip Hop Project, and we put on different type of hip hop events for the city. You know, both you know both as a platform for like you know up and coming artists or, 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 or even touring artists. And as well as um, uh, you know, something cool for fans of hip hop to come through. Trey come through all the time, you know what I'm saying? Um, but um, like, so I was like, okay, you have to submit me an EPK, and dudes have zero idea what an EPK is, right? That's so, okay. If you don't have an electronic press kit, send me three videos or send me three songs. Send me all your social media links. Send me a bio, and send me at least. Uh, one video of a, of, of a live performance and one music video. Pretty much the only thing people can send me are SoundCloud links and, uh, you know, their social media links. They ain't got no bio, so I don't know who you are. you just a, a dude out the blue hitting me up, asking me, you know what I'm saying, can I get on the show? You know, I'm, I'm over to anybody as long as you're dope and you're serious about what you do. So I go do my research on you. There's zero. I can't Google you. You're not online or whatever. So, okay, I'm not interested in that or whatever. I'm not going to put you on the stage. If I'm bringing somebody like uh, Tef Polk from St. Louis or Superstition from North Carolina who are, who are like, you know, or, or you know, if, if I'm putting a show together with Nappy Roots or whatever, I'm not putting somebody who I've never seen perform in my life on stage. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, 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 you know, I'm a quality of a quantity type guy. So you gotta have, so you got to have you performing and you got to have somebody at least tape you or something so I can see what you're working with or whatever. Um, if you can't do that for a person like myself, what makes you think that a record label that's a, a billion dollar industry is going to give you a record deal? Like, don't get it twisted. Somebody like Young Thug or whatever, he has his, he he's with the camp. As, as terrible as he might be, or if you don't like him or whatever, he's with the camp that has their business together. Uh, Trinidad J James, his career is over already. But you know what? He knew the right people. He had his business together. He had he had enough money to what he needed to do. He got he got with fifteen minutes of fame. They terrible artists like like I, like these, these 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 cats who make terrible music that we hate. And part of the reason why we don't listen to the radio, please believe that all their perfect work is on deck. You know what I'm saying? And that's why you hear them there. They're easily accessible. You ain't got to do all this other stuff. Um, I was talking to A and R the other day, just kind of picking his brain on what A and R's look like. He's like, look, when we look to sign an artist, we want to do the least amount of per- work as possible. If you got great music, but your social media and your whole live presence is whack, that's extra work that the label got to do. If you got, if, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you got, if, if uh, you know, you ain't got no videos, that's, that's more money that, that's, that's more money that the label has to spend on videos. If your website is poor, though, you ain't got no website, that's more money that the label got to spend on the website. You dig what I'm saying? So it's like, so they want, so what these A&Rs are looking for is, they want somebody with, especially the ones I'm looking at. I'm on the phone right now. Go back in there. Um, they they want somebody who's talented, but even they look for the package that's all together to where, you know, a lot of independent labels ain't got no huge budgets. And the major labels are being cheap or whatever. So they're looking for the package to where they ain't got to do much work, where they can pretty much just co-sign you and get money, up and, you know, and build with you to get money or whatever. So if you ain't got your package together, your online presence, you ain't got your, your print presence, like one thing I've been blessed to do, you know, locally it's been pretty big. I've been in the advocate. I've been in the two two five, the only artist in the two two five. I've been in the dig magazine. I've been in the drum. So different print publications, different websites, different blogs, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, where people you have like a digital fingerprint and you have a print fingerprint. 
when people can Google you and find you and see that you're not Joe Blow who just decided to record a song in his, in his, in his, in his shower the other day. Like, having all that together is, is important or whatever. Like, I ain't got no crazy budget. Like, the majority of the things that I do, it comes straight out of, you know, I got like a little side budget that, 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 that me and my wife put aside from, you know what I'm saying, our, our jobs as teachers, our, our very modestly paid jobs as teachers. And I put it to the side. I ain't got no crazy budget. I've been able, but, you know, I've been able to research and kind of navigate, you know, as best as possible or whatever. But if you ain't got some other things, man, ain't nobody really going to check for you. Um, pretty much you just kind of throwing water down an empty hole on, on, a, on, a, on a very expensive hobby. To answer your question. Man, word, man. You know, that's the thing a lot of cats don't realize. It also could potentially affect their their leverage. I mean, if they already have themselves established online, then, you know, they may not need it there. They may be good just doing their own thing. And it's the guys that don't have their situation together that are all, that, that are the ones that are mainly looking for deals, man. So, you know, I feel you on that, man. Um, I mean, I'm sorry. I, I was gonna say this real quick. And Trey know this, man. Trey's recorded the last like three and a half projects I've done. I only work with him as an engineer. I make nothing but conscious raps, and I and, and my stuff is not profane at all. I don't. I ain't never had to shoot nobody in my raps. I ain't never called a woman out her name. I ain't never sold no dope. I make black empowerment, conscious raps, unashamed, unabashedly. That's what I do. And if I am able to make ways in the industry and get these looks, you know what I'm saying? Like Trey tell you, you cut them on my shows, most of my fan base is white. And I'm up there yep. talking straight black and power and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And that's because for two you know, as far as like the fan base, that's because I get some content they can relate to and I give it to them in a particular way where it's like you dip in vitamins and sugar. So it tastes good and you get something from it. On the on the second end, I've been able to maneuver the industry with the exact same music, never sacrificing my soul. It's because I under I, I I know that like it's like a it's like a uh, it's like a I, it's hard for me to explain and break it down but like it's a particular formula you have your paperwork together you put you put the hard work in you put the time in and, 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 and you know what I'm saying you make you know working smart and working hard doing your research knowing who to talk to when you talk to these people knowing the correct answers to, to uh, ask and you know what I'm saying and for them when they ask you questions you know what I'm saying knowing the correct answers to give them. When they ask you these questions, or whatever. If I can do it as a as a, as, a, as a black fat conscious rapper from Oklahoma who does that curse, any artist can do it or whatever. But I, but it all depends on marrying yourself to that grind and that hustle, and marrying yourself to educating your, to educate yourself to the industry to whatever you're trying to accomplish. Well, 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 Black, why don't you holler about a little music right quick before we roll out of here, man? Why don't you tell them about the project you got out right now, uh, well, what it's talking about, and how you came about coming up with that concept for the record. All right. I, I thought somebody was about to ask me a question. Do I, I, I'm sorry I cut you off. You somebody have another question before I answer that? No. You good. Oh, okay. yeah, you good, man. I, I, mean, I, know, I just had to get that point across, but I, I apologize. Uh, um, so my last album, um, it's called Black Collar. Um, I was working on another project called Trap Hop, and it, which was very, very successful for me. I was working on it, and um, I was just writing. Um, I was just writing in my iPhone one day, and I was like, "I'm about to create a new class to call the Black Collar." You know what I'm saying? Black God, uh, black you know, black scholars, black education, whatever. And so um, I just I just thought about like you know, um, like who I am as a man, as a as as, as a father, as an educator, as a husband. Who I, as an artist, what I stand for, you know, I came up with the concept of black collar. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, you know, white collar, you're working for the man. I'm sorry, white collar, you are the man. Blue collar, you're working for the man. Black collar is a man or a woman who works for themselves to create change, like juxtapose. So when I say change, I'm talking about change your community, change your life, change your neighborhood, change society, and also you know, I'm talking about change in, in terms of a entrepreneurial sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're finding a way to work for yourself or whatever. Um, you know, you know, what's the definition of black collar, black guy, black empowerment, black scholars, protecting the black woman and the black child, build black businesses and circulate the black dollar. That's who I am as a man. That's that's what I'm that's what I'm about. Um, the album I dropped it on Black Friday, of course, November 28th of last year. Um, I've been able to tour it. Um, I did a show. I toured it from. Uh, 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 Tennessee, um, 
uh, uh, Tennessee, Alabama, you know what I'm talking about, Texas, Oklahoma, of course, Louisiana, you know what I'm saying, uh, Atlanta, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, just, just pretty much touring the region, doing two or three uh, cities in each state or whatever. Um, this summer I did like a tour city tour and I booked out myself, grounded it out. Um, it was my first like retail ready CD, so I'm blessed to have it in some of the local stores here in Baton Rouge. I got it in stores in Memphis, I got it in stores in Jackson, uh, Mississippi, or whatever. I, I, yeah, shut up, Jackson. I always go to Jackson. Um, just grinding, man. Just and, it, and you know the project is like, you know, I came off a of trap hop. The trap hop was was me kicking my social political conscious rhymes over trap production, and people really really responded to it. But you know, as an artist, and you know, I you know the, the beauty of being an independent artist, I can do it so whatever the hell I want to say. Ain't nobody gonna stop me. If you don't like it, don't buy it. But there's people who do are gonna like it. And if you don't like it, I'm performing so good, and I'm a, I'm gonna sell it to you so well, you gonna support it regardless. That's how, I mean, that's, that's kind of how I rock with the situation. You know what I'm saying? But um, but basically, man, you know, basically it's like um, you know, I, I didn't want to do another trap project. It was very very successful. If I'd have done trap pop two, I probably you know something else might have came to me. But it wasn't in my spirit to do, man. Like I wanted to make a. You know, I'm an educated brother, college educated, working in the community, and I have a lot of friends like minded. You know what I'm saying? Like me and Trey be chopping up about hidden colors and all the other stuff. Like, so you know, I wanted to make I wanted to make a grown adult hip hop album that people like us can vibe to, that can listen to. Um, I, you know, I had boom bap, I had a, a trappish type beat. I, you know, what I'm saying I had some hardcore stuff. You know, I, I had my first ever little girly song on the record. I had some spiritual right. stuff. I got some. I got I got some MC stuff to where I'm just really I have a song called Facebook Rant where really like literally the hooks are me ranting on the hooks or whatever you know what I'm saying so um, it was very free very creative you know me and Trey we, we you know we, we recorded one version of it and then we scrapped it then we started all over added some new stuff to it the second time was way 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 better than the first time we was recording we had a better vibe and we kind of had a better idea of uh, what we wanted to do with the project or whatever him as an engineer me as an artist or whatever he had out on a couple records or whatever. But, um, you know, it was just a beautiful situation, man. Like, I, I, it's so, it ain't so what Trap Pop has done because that's been for a couple of years, but, um, for it to be 10 months, man, I, I can't, I can't be, I can't complain. Like, you know, I was blessed to have people come buy it off of iTunes, off of Bandcamp, and come buy a physical CD because, you know, they spent $30 on one particular CD because they felt that much value in what I was saying and what I was, what, what I was, uh, putting forth or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, so I mean, it was it was a beautiful thing, man. It was a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, the first single, "Live My Love," I was blessed to have it like premiered on uh, Chuck D's uh, rap station network or whatever. He has his own like radio, it's called, uh, rap central station or whatever. He has his own radio show or whatever that he uh, you know he plays like underground hip hop. You know, basically trying to put a spotlight on the conscious stuff or whatever. So I'm "Live My Love," uh, you know, engineered by Trey, of course, uh, produced by my man Tez, uh, Tez on the beat or whatever. Or uh, Tez did that, rather. Um, you know, uh, Chuck D, you know what I'm saying? It was like a dope record. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that's, that, I come from a yeah. city in the studio. So I Chuck smiled D for two it. weeks off of that. Man, I was huh? cheesing for two weeks. I was cheesing for two weeks when yeah, I started. Man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man, Chuck D, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, uh, when I did it in New Orleans, you know what I'm saying? What's the name? Uh, uh, Jay Alec was rocking with it. Carolus One was rocking with it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, just, man, just, just blessed to make the music that I want to make, say what I want to say. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, like a man, like as a, as an educator and as a youth development worker, like my primary audience, my primary audience has always been the young brothers I work with. Because I basically try to take like, well, some of my projects, I say not everything, but like, you know, like my my, my life goal is here to, to work with, you know what I'm saying, young black people, specifically young male teenagers or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, so, that's, 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 so when I write my rhymes about the struggle and the trap, I'm writing rhymes about trying to give them lessons or put them on game, how they cannot be caught up in that trap or whatever. And so it's a blessing when I'm talking to, you know, black 17-year-olds who might be in eighth grade and everybody can, everybody can relate to it, everybody appreciates it, everybody finds value in it, man. It's, it's a blessing, especially from a country boy comes from Oklahoma, man. Like, you know, I don't, I don't take none of that lightly or whatever. So uh, Black College has been awesome for me. Um, me and Trey was trying to work on another project for this year, we just couldn't get it together, and that's fine. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want, we didn't want to force nothing or whatever. But uh, you know, about to start working on another, my next release, which I'm not gonna say what it's called. You know what I'm saying? Finally, next fall, actually, uh, between me, and, well, I don't give out information, but uh, I might have a nice little distribution situation coming my way. But you know, been on the phone real heavy recently. Um, but you know, man, just been blessed, working hard, 
still working my projects, still doing shows. Uh, you know, people still buying it, people still going to my iTunes, my Google Play, my band camp, people still talking about it. You know, just trying to make like Black Collar is the soundtrack to a man or a woman working to overcome their struggle. And that's what it's about. All right. Give give you sh- um give um any shout outs, D I mean um Black or uh your um contact information, man, your websites and everything before we get out of here. All right, so I want to shout out my man, Chief Universal. Shout out Donnie Rose. Shout out Alpha Banks. Shout out uh, JB. Shout out Tell Poe. Shout out Substantial. Uh, 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 man, so many people. Shout out to Be A Hip Hop Project. Man, Bruce Go, DJ Automatic. Justin Ivy, Mark Dub. Shout out. You know, I can't. There's, there's so many people who I work with that you know that, that, that I talk to all the time. Shout out uh, uh, my man Joe, Real Profit, TheAntidote.com. Get my people, I work with them hard body. Just anybody and everybody who's been a support and kind of lifted their hand. And what I'm doing, definitely shout out to my man Trey. That's, that's my goal. If, if Trey, if Trey if ain't recorded me, I'm just not getting recorded. Pretty much is how I rock. Um, as far as me, you can find me at uh, marcelpblack.com. Um, I have, you can, you can get my, um, yeah, you, you, you can order physicals of black collar as well as check out the rest of my music on my website. You can go to marcelpblack.com. Everything is simple black, black collar. Uh, that's in my discography. It's free or whatever. You can also order physical copies of uh, Black Collar on, uh, you know, um, I'm sorry, marcelpblack.bandstep.com. You can order stuff there as well. Um, Black Collars on iTunes. You know, pretty much all your digital retailers, iTunes, Google Play, uh, Amazon, Spotify, all the other good stuff. It's on Apple Music. It's on Tidal. I need Jay to cut me that check. You know, so I'm on Tidal and all the other good stuff. Um, <laughs> and for, for, if, if people who just want to stream it to see what I'm talking about the album's on SoundCloud you can stream that bad boy for free um, you know what I'm saying uh, Marcel P. Black on Twitter Marcel P. Black on uh, Instagram Facebook Marcel P. Black um, if you want to contact me for any business um, you know business inquiries or whatever Maroon Music at gmail.com if anybody wants to book me for a show book Marcel P. Black at gmail.com uh, man just catch me in these streets bro if, I don't, if you got any bad rules listeners the next year, Hip Hop Project uh, show is in, um, it will be at Chelsea here in Baton Rouge on October 23rd. I got myself, Truth Universal, Box, and Kyle Hubbard coming in from Houston, Texas, or whatever. We'll be rocking out, you know what I'm saying? If you're interested, just uh, find me online, but you Google me. Like, uh, I'm very accessible, man. I'm, I'm, a, I'm I, you know, I'm my own manager, I'm my own promoter, I'm my own security. So I'll be out here all the time at these hip hop shows. By myself, I'm very, I'm, I'm a big black and street scared or whatever. But I'm, he's trying to say I'm a teddy bear. I, you know, I like to talk to people. I like to build. I love nothing more than to chop it up about hip-hop and how we can build as a culture. So, uh, man, just just hit me up. I'm very accessible. And uh, we just take it from there. All right. You can take it, d that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look for production. Uh, visit us on majormusicemd.com. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at D dot major music. Same thing as well on Instagram and the new Snapchat. Uh, visit the website as well if you're looking for that uh, project from Synthesized Minds Audio Pictures. Appreciate everybody that's downloaded the instrumental uh, album. Got more music coming at you guys soon. Uh, shout out to that boy Boom out there in LA right now. Uh, just touring and uh, networking, doing some interviews out there. Like what you're doing, man. And Marcel, man, I appreciate you coming on the show as well. Man. Look forward to having you back in the future. Oh, great time. I apologize for the last couple of times. We got kind of mixed up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I didn't get to come on the show. But uh tried to tell about the show for a long time. I'm definitely honored. It's a privilege to come here. Chopping up with you, brothers. Thank you very much. I got my number. Any time to hit me up, we, we can do it. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. I'm going to pass it off to uh, Trey. Yeah, this is your boy Trey from Nuance World Production. If you're looking for any type of musical things, uh, beats, if you're looking for engineering, mastering, you're looking for lyrics, you're looking for vocals, hit us up at K-N-U-A-N-C-E at Yahoo.com, or you can follow us on Facebook at K-N-U-A-N-C-E World P-R-O-D. That's World Productions. Passing on the core. Yo, yo, I want to thank Marcel P. Black for coming through. Um, if you guys are looking for any Mixing, mastering beats, audio restoration, audio editing. Hit me up, coolnerdproductions.com. That's cool with a K. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram, K-O-O-L underscore N-E-R-D. And we are definitely going to get into these topics next week. Don't think we forgot. Uh, great interview. Thank you, Marcel, for coming through, man. D-Dot, kicking it back to you. Yes, sir. This includes, concludes another edition of the producer's corner. Join us same time, same place, icebreakerradio.com next Monday night, 7 p.m. Central Time. This concludes our show. Yeah.
Peace. Yeah, that was. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that, man. It was love. No problem. No problem. Uh, I'm gonna get on down. Y'all be easy. All right, Marcel. Thanks, bro. No problem, hey, man. Peace. Mm -hmm. All right.